This lesson teaches you how to create a user profile for use with Netscape Communicator. You will learn how to organize bookmarks into subject related groups and add them to the personal toolbar. You will also learn how to set many of the browser preferences including the viewing area, fonts, image loading and caching. The user profile manager utility can be used when more than one person is using a single copy of communicator. It allows you to establish a set of preferences for each user. We will look at preferences later, but they involve such items as bookmarks, address books, mail servers, etc. To create a new profile, you first open the user profile manager, which gives you the dialog box shown here. You have to then click on the new button, which will begin a wizard. The wizard will walk you through the short process of creating a new profile. The most important step is filling in a name and email address. After completing the wizard, you can make changes in the communicator component and the changes will be saved to that profile. The next time you open communicator, you will see a dialog box where you can select your profile and click on the start communicator button. The user profile manager can even be helpful if you are the only user of a copy of communicator. Some users have more than one email account and can use it to establish a profile for each account. Note that you can only use the profile manager when you open communicator. Once opened, you have to close communicator first and reopen with a different profile to change profiles. In other words, you cannot change profiles on the fly. The more you browse the web, the more bookmarks you are likely to collect. Multiple bookmarks increase the need for organizing them into subject related groups so that you can easily access websites you frequently visit. Bookmarks may also be imported or exported so that they can be shared with other users. When you create a user profile, a set of bookmarks is automatically generated. Those bookmarks appear in various subject folders such as education. One nice enhancement to Navigator is that you can also put bookmarks directly into one of the folders while adding the bookmark. You do this by choosing File Bookmark and selecting the folder in which you would like to save the bookmark. Being able to share internet bookmark lists is an important feature because many people work in collaborative groups. You can save on your time by importing someone else's list instead of searching the net for useful sites yourself. Similarly, you may be in a position to save a colleague time by sharing your bookmark list. In order to import a bookmark list from someone else, you will need to know the location of the file. It can be on a server or on a disk. The procedure to import is similar to that of exporting. You may notice that below the bookmarks is another bar called the personal toolbar. You can set it up such that your individual folders and bookmarks become buttons and drop down items on this toolbar. This gives you much quicker access to your favorite sites. For instance, you could put a few search engines on the personal toolbar and get one click access to them instead of going through the bookmark menu. Previously, such one-click access was restricted to buttons created by the developer of the software, which you could not customize. Items you place on the personal toolbar are automatically entered into your bookmarks in a folder called Personal Toolbar Folder. When Navigator launches, four bars appears at the top of your window. Across the very top is the menu bar. At the next level, you have the Navigation Toolbar buttons. Below this, you have the Location Toolbar. And finally, the Personal Toolbar. The toolbars take up a great deal of your viewing space and can be reduced to give you a larger viewing area. This can be done by clicking to the far left to completely hide the toolbar, but you also have options to have the icons appear on the toolbar. By default, Navigator connects to the Netscape server when it launches. Most of the general users do not change this because they imagine that the internet has a starting point and that Netscape must be it. In fact, your browser can start by opening any page, like a company homepage or even a blank page. If you wish to increase the size of the text you are viewing, you can select a larger size from the fonts category 
under Appearance in the Preferences dialog box, which appears when you click on the Preferences option in the Edit menu. There are two types of fonts that can be sized. The Variable Width font. This is the font normally used for text that displays on a page. The Fixed font. This is the font normally used for the text of email and for special sections of pages where the author wants to simulate email, teletype or programming code. When you alter the default font, you may encounter some distortion when viewing a page that has been designed with specific font sizes. The color of the fonts and the color of the background can be controlled through the Preferences dialog box. Most websites have designed their pages to enhance the information contained in it, but you may wish to override this if you find the text colors or background images annoying. You can improve the apparent connection performance of your browser by not automatically loading images and by increasing the cache size. Text appears to move over the internet more rapidly than graphic images. This is because image files are larger. Some users will even turn off the automatic loading of images through the advanced section of the Preferences dialog box. They will use the Images button which appears on the navigation toolbar after the Auto Load Images preference has been set to load the images only if, after reading the page, they feel that they would like to view the image. You may have noticed that the advanced section also has information related to cookies and FTP. Cookies are pieces of information that are stored on your hard drive and can be accessed directly by websites. These are primarily used by sites which require you to use a login and password. The website stores the necessary information on your hard drive, relieving you of remembering yet another password. You can set an option in the browser to warn you when accepting cookies. There have been some security concerns with using cookies. Example, website owners setting them up to gain more information than the user intended. Hence, it is better to have the browser warn you whenever cookies are being placed on your hard drive. Fortunately, very few problems with cookies have been reported. The FTP section gives you the option of letting the browser automatically send your email address as a password when entering the FTP site. This is a common method of getting access to FTP sites. Hence, you should keep this option selected. The other settings in the advanced section have to do with Java. Web pages that use Java can be highly interactive and contain features that are not supported by basic HTML. You will most likely want to allow your browser to download Java applets and read Java scripts. But there are occasions when organizations that use firewalls do not allow Java-enabled pages to be downloaded for security reasons. If that is the case, then you should uncheck these boxes to disable Java and JavaScript. When the Navigator installer sets up its application on your computer, it makes a cache folder or directory, which it will use to temporarily store copies of files that you request. Subsequently, each time you request for files that are already in the cache folder, Navigator will open these temporary files for you, rather than going back to the remote server and retrieving the same files. This is caching. Apparent performance will be enhanced if you set the browser cache to 5 MB or more for this temporary storage space. Increased cache implies that Navigator can easily reload previously retrieved documents without having to establish a connection to the server. If you know that a website you frequently visit updates pages routinely, use the reload button in the button bar. This causes Netscape to make a new connection to that server and to retrieve the updated documents. The default setting for caching files is once per session. When you exit Netscape, it may clear the cache. If you have increased the cache size beyond 5 MB, it may take a moment longer to quit the program. If this is a problem for you, you can set the disk cache size to a lower amount of storage space. There is also a memory cache setting that can be used for temporary storage of files, but these files will be stored only for the current session. In other words, when you close Navigator, memory cache will be automatically erased. Helper applications play a crucial role in enabling you to take advantage of the multimedia environment of the World Wide Web.
These applications play sound, show video or animation and display graphics. Many such applications are available as freeware or shareware and can be downloaded from FTP sites. They can also be accessed via news readers or made available on Gopher servers as well as web pages. You can configure Netscape to work with these applications using the Applications options from the Preferences dialog box. You have to perform the following steps before different data file types can be viewed via your web browser. Decide which data file formats will be downloaded to your computer via the www or other internet resources. Many of the formats are platform specific. Acquire and install the applications capable of viewing the data file types you will download to your computer. You may already have many of these applications resident on your computer. Configure your web browser for each of these data file types and associated viewer applications. Your web browser must know the complete directory path and executable file name for each viewer application.